Okay, so we're, we're asking dumb SEO questions. Uh, each week uh, we meet to answer the uh, SEO questions asked on, on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight we have um, uh, Daniel Ika Nugraha. Um, he describes himself as an average coder. He's actually the world's greatest programmer. Um, David Roseanne uh, is a, a, an SEO copywriter with, um, I think, 20, 30, 30 years experience uh, uh, technical writing, but uh, the last 10 of which uh, have been SEO copywriting. Would that be a fair description? Yes, that, that's good. Uh, I'll let you get away with that this week. Okay. What part of the UK are you based in, um, Dave? Um, the Wild West, according to you. Uh, no, uh, West Sussex, right, <laughs> right by the English Channel. West Sussex, okay. Karig uh, Betty uh, is is uh, from. Um, um, oh dear me, um, I've forgotten. Karig, it, it, it's in India, um, but I can't remember exactly where. It's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> Tim Kappa. <laughs> Um, Tim uh, is a um, proprietor of uh, onlineownership.com. Uh, he's a conversion rate uh, optimization specialist and, uh, um, and the world's greatest SEO, according to Tim. And uh, anyway, what we do here is uh, answer the uh, SEO questions asked. Uh, and our first uh, question tonight. Um, is um, one asked by Unipro Educational uh, a Digital Marketing Agency uh, from India. Um, they say, hello friends, uh, my question is how, how can we improve our XML sitemap? How can we get more benefit from uh, XML um, and as, as the search engines prefer this sitemap? Well, I think it's the only one that they uh, Preferred. Is that right, um, guys? Yeah, yeah, and it has to be in a specific format um, for them to actually read it. Uh, in your webmaster tools, <clears throat> when you um, add your sitemap, you have the ability to test it. Google has a quick read through and tells you if, obviously, if it's formatted correctly. Um, but in terms of improving your sitemap, well, you can't necessarily improve your sitemap. Your sitemap should be the relevant URLs uh, within your site, starting from obviously your top line navigation and working its way down. Um, and they should obviously be the pages that you would like Google to index, crawl, and follow. Um, so there isn't sort of any intrinsic benefit, but basically by actually adding the sitemap uh, to, to Webmaster Tools and having a sitemap, um, search engines can quickly see, read, and understand um, the, the, you know, the priorities within your site, all the pages within your site, um, and, and, it, and it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's just great. But as for you know, some secret magic source that you can do to it, uh, well, there isn't one. As long as you have one, uh, you're on the right track. Um, obviously, you don't want to add pages in there which are sort of like that you've got as, let's say um, you've got tags which you've got set at no index follow. Um, you know, those don't necessarily need to be in the sitemap per se. These are, you know, your sitemap is sort of what you want to be found um, and sort of in the top line, you know, top line navigation, working your way to your secondary pages, and so on and so on. Um, uh, so yeah, it's just great to have it, but there's no sort of some secret source uh, that you can manipulate them in any way, shape, or form. No problem. Um, do you want to get that phone, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, Daniel asks uh, which button, uh, the, the, the button for the, the queue time of the first question, Dan. Um, okay, <coughs> so one, one thing I did uh, um, here on um, the community uh, earlier this week, I see Alistair Lattimore 
um, added to a, an, a, another sitemap question um, and suggested that um, uh, if, if you have many sections on your site, it's sometimes useful to uh, segment your sitemaps, use an index sitemap uh, and uh, um, some down-level sitemaps for, for each particular segment of your site. It, it, it helps you to uh, um, keep a closer eye on, on what's going on. Okay, um, our next uh, question um, is from Matt Fletcher. And uh, Matt wants to know, um, do you pay uh, much attention um, to ranking in Bing, Yahoo and other search engines? Are there any techniques that work better for them uh, compared to Google? Would trying to please their algorithms hinder work that you're doing to please Google? I'm assuming that many of the factors are similar, uh, but we have seen good strides on Google during the past 12 months or so but are slipping in Bing and Yahoo judging by analytics. I also can't find a decent way to track keywords in these search engines. I'm also finding things are going backwards for Google rankings. I appreciate this, that this is the nature of SEO, but it seems like I'm knocking my head against the wall at the moment. I've added a lot of content to websites that is richer than before. They're now responsive, site speed has been improved, but it seems to be the link building that we're struggling with. Uh, any tips to help out in this regard or to help keep things fresh? Uh, any help appreciated and sorry for the long-winded message. Not half as sorry as I am, Matt Fletcher. Okay, um, guys, what do you have to say to this one? I'm, uh, I think Tim's got his uh, microphone off if he was trying to say something. Yeah, I'm pulling a gym. That's called pulling a gym. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I pay much attention to Bing and Yahoo? Uh, yes and no. Um, but, uh, you know, Bing, Bing is certainly, certainly... Um, something to keep your eye on. Um, it's you know they're, they're they're really making some fantastic inroads in in with their uh, question and answer box and their knowledge their, and their knowledge graphs. Um, uh, uh, I, w I yeah look you know the thing is you can only <coughs> you can only sort of. Um, I, w I wouldn't chase algorithms. Firstly, there are only so many that we know about. There are only so many that we can assume um, we can we can understand and please. Um, so chasing, you know, let's say if there was twenty things for Bing, twenty things for Yahoo, and twenty things for Google, I I I, I would. <sighs> I would just sort of condense them and use overall sort of best practice. Um, ultimately, Google being the nature of the beast and the search market that it has, um, you sort of kind of want to look after that one. But they all ultimately follow some of the of the same principles as such. Um, Tracking keywords in these, you know, there's uh, a, lo a lot of uh, keyword tracking um, uh, software out there that will track Bing, Yahoo, uh, and and other uh, and other search engines. Um, you can obviously add your sitemaps to Bing. I'm not entirely sure if you can add sitemaps to Yahoo. I actually I, that I don't know, but of course there's other ones, Yandex and Beidou, you can add webmaster tool, you know, and sitemaps and, and, and webmaster tools to all of them. Um, add a lot of content, you know, does anyone have his website? Anyone? 
Uh, I'm not sure, but Tim, I'm looking for it as we, as we, as we speak. The thing is, um, so uh, add a lot of content to the website. It's now responsive site people was link building was struggling with. Uh, right. Well, um, if you if you're adding content uh, to your site, obviously, um, that's great. That's that's the perfect step there. Uh, it's a question on how you're marketing that, because of course. On the same flip side, you're saying you're struggling with link building. Well, how are you marketing your content? Who are you reaching out to? Who are you? Um, uh, who do you have in your circles? Uh, who do you have? Uh, you know, who do you communicate with? Who do you uh, talk to? Uh, what do you read? You know, uh, resources. What are the authoritative sites in your area? Do you actually talk to people on there? Do you converse in the forums? Do you partake? Do you comment? Things like this. Because that is part of all of uh, going to help you with your link building. Once you've published a great piece of content on your site, these are the people that you're going to reach out to firstly um, to help you get that out there. Um, you know, I mean, you know, if you, you just look, you, obviously, if they, if you're um, interacting with them, they will see the stuff that you're publishing, um, and if it's great stuff, they will also share it, etc. So that's how you build, build, you know, build links, etc. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, I just published something that I saw the other day, just a, a quick sort of thing. Uh, it was just published on my site. It was just to do with knowledge graph and a, and a massive cock up with um, reviews, um, and I sent that out to the people within my sort of, you know, Google Plus kind of circles. And uh, initially there was an initial sort of 20, uh, 20 reads and 20 shares of that. Um, and over, over, an, over another week that matured into 120 visits. Um, obviously I haven't monitored the links coming back to that. But, the, but this is how you, you, you know, you start building that. You, you need to build relationships within your genre in your business and then you use that uh, to help you actually uh, engage and publish uh, or engage with people once you publish content. Um, it's also, they also actually help gives you, give you ideas on, on, on new ideas, new content that you're going to create, etc. Um, now getting like, so, so, so that is how you can link build with your content. Um, if you're still looking at, you know, kind of link building, I, unfortunately, I haven't got your site here, so I don't know what kind, what you're into. Um, yeah, Tim. Have you looked at? All uh, oh, right, we've got something here. Oh, okay, so we're looking at. Um, he, he runs a, a site, um, Stay in Media. Um, and uh, the, that link is to stayin.co.uk, and he has a series of, of region-based um, um, sites such as Stay in Cornwall, Stay in Devon, and so on. Um, you, you guys, they call them um, um, counties, I think. Um, here in Australia, we call them city blocks. Okay, yep. So um, I'm just looking at the stay in Cornwall.co.uk uh, on your blog. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm just going to quickly look at one of your. So, yeah, you know, you've got some great content in there. We, you, you, we need to get out there. Um, you need to get it out there. Uh, one thing I just would quickly say to you, just to, I just want to look at one of your tags because these things always stick out straight in my. All right, I know you actually put them as in categories. Yeah, just please be careful on the amount of categories that you actually put one specific article in. Okay. Um, 
because you're going to just end up sort of with uh, you know uh, thin content. Um, Panda ultimately will look at this saying, right, well, I've got this article in 20 different categories. So basically, you've got an article showing. Ultimately, they will just filter it out. And then that one piece of content that you did actually do is... Um, you know, is is not going to show if if a search engine can't decide. Well, w you know, he has this article in twenty different pages in twenty different categories. Um, look, I can't figure out which one's the best for it. I'm just not going to show it at all. Um, so that's one thing you certainly need to just take care of. Uh, one article goes in one category, and you can actually. I mean, yeah, okay, it can go into another one if it's you know really specific. Um, but uh, and and your tags generally should be um, no index follow. But for example, and I'll just give you a quick one because you know uh, I've just clicked on one active um, active and sports. Now that is your category for active and sports. Um, but the articles in there, I've got October offers at the San Marit Hotel, gourmet break at the San Marit Hotel. Um, yeah, are those really um, should they really be in the active category? You know, the, these these are kind of things you should um, uh, you re really tighten up um, because if you're chucking them everywhere, here, there, and everywhere in every category, um, and they're all indexable, then Google will at at some point Panda will just go, whoa, let's just filter all of this out. Um, so that's just a you know a quick tip on that. Um, yeah, so it's a question of building your authority now. I see you do have quite a few different authors. Uh, your authors need to, um, you need to you know, have, have a little conflag with all your authors there. Um, the authors also need to start promoting their articles. I know it's up, but their article because you're helping them with their own authorship um, and their authority online. They need to also start promoting it within their circles. So, for example, Great October offers at the San Maritz Hotel. I'm looking at this one. It was written by Dave Elston. Fine. It doesn't have a single tweet. It's got one uh, G plus. You know, one one plus one. It's got no 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 pins. Well, I can kind of understand the no pins as such. Um, do we not need a Facebook uh, button there so that people can also share it there? Or and add this, but the point here is Dan Elston should have uh, plus one it, and that should have gone onto your uh, brand page or your um, you know your your obviously your Stay in Cornwall brand page. So that minimum should have been two, but there's only one plus one there. Okay, now obviously Dan should have also tweeted it, and so should have you guys. So the point is, you need to leverage your authors also. To, to, to help with the marketing because after all, yes, they're providing content, but at the end of the day, you're also helping them build their authority in in um, you know in travel writing. Um, you know the situation we, we 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 could crack on, but the whole the, the whole thing here is you need to engage and you need to find your audience. Um, and once you found those, when you publish your great content your audience will help you market that content but you need you, you know you need to find that audience fantastic answer Tim absolutely brilliant um, okay I don't know how we can top that Kartik Benny in, in the um, hangout chat here says that uh, he thinks that Bing or any other search engines um, don't have algos like Google or they're not updating their data as frequently um, because for Yahoo he often sees the same results um, even after a year. Um, yeah, um, and um, also we're introducing a new um, um, feature from now on. Um, we're asking our panellists to select um, the best answer, um, the best community answer um, for each question. You're off the hook for this one because there really is only one that's an extensive answer um, given by Blade S. Um, so it's uh, not only best answer, it's the only answer. 
Um, all right, I just have to mark that. Okay, and uh, that, that, that'll be marked on, on the WCAQuestions.com site um, to make it easier when people come later. Um, it, it, it will be noted as, as selected by the panellists as best answer and also when uh, uh, the inimitable Edwin Yonk um, shares the link uh, to the SEA Questions community, um, it will also be noted there. Question three on our run list from Christian Pastor Cruz Molina asks, is it safe to implement a schema local business markup? He said, I'm, I'm working um, for a brick and mortar business that also has online sales. Um, is it safe to implement schema local business markup um, to improve the visibility of the B and M places, brick and mortar, I guess? Um, I'm worried that it could affect online sales for places far from our physical location. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, so you're worried in the sense that um, by adding schema local, uh, you know, the local business markup to your address and your footer, that Google is all of a sudden going to only show you for that physical location. Um, no, because the point is, is if you've already got your address in there, Google would already be doing that naturally. So by actually adding a uh, schema markup to your address is not going to change um, or affect anything from your physical location, um, you know, your other online sales. Um, no, it, it, it won't. I, I wouldn't have a problem. Uh, you know, that, and obviously your address should be on your site anyway, uh, and, and that's what you mark it up as. It won't be a problem. Excellent. Um, uh, anybody else? On the uh, community, I see SEMXE said uh, uh, it depends on your target location and audience. Um, and uh, Johnny Bass uh, said make one website uh, um, for each target. Um, Either of those responses meaty enough for us to award a, a, a best answer, guys? No. Okay. Our next um, question is um, it's question number four from uh, Dave Elliott, um, who answers uh, um, a lot of um, stuff um, on, on our community. And he wants to know what are the best enterprise level SEO suites? He said that it's been done, but not for a while. Um, what are the best enterprise level SEO suites? And particularly, um, which suites generate the best automated or automated-ish reports? Um, well, in that, I actually, um, I mentioned, obviously, Moz. Um, Raven, purely because, firstly, this last couple of weeks they've been really they've been really um, going on and updating their new reporting systems. Then, of course, uh, we use um, Semrush, um, which uh, is 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 good. You can white label. Um, the only thing there is you can't kind of um, create. Uh, one report, sort of, you, you would you would still need to uh, create separate ones, but I'm sure Semrush is probably working on creating similar kind of reporting structure like Moz and um, uh, like Moz and um, Raven, and then of course, uh, which you also pointed out yourself was um, Cognitive SEO, and I've had a quick look, and I'm going to take that for a trial run. Thanks for that. Um, However, the pricing structure is like 50 bucks more a month. So when I take them for a test drive, they're going to have to be seriously on the ball for me to, for example, change up you know, and, and start paying an, an additional 50 quid a month over and above the, 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 the monthly rate. And then analytics, 
uh, SEO software, never seen before, but I'm going to give, give that a, a test drive. And, um, and yeah, see what kind of the costs, costs are like on that. So yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a few out there, and especially in the last month, they've really been ramping up their reporting um, and the ease of reporting, um, and how you can tailor it specifically, not just a random oh here's my report and it pulls it out to all of them. How you can tailor it specifically to all the different clients and what that client actually wants to see. So yeah, you know, it's interesting times. I mean, they're really ramping it up um, in the last month or so. All of these people, so. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Fair enough. Um, all right. Um, can can we um, award a best answer on this one, Tim? Award mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I see that uh, Matt O'Toole uh, responded uh, on um, our yeah. Um, community. Yeah, he has done, and um, I did ask him because obviously on some of the ones there there was no actual pricing, and then I just see he has responded actually, saying that to actually customize it based on the number of sites, keywords, etc. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, fair enough. I mean, uh, I'm going to take it for a test drive, but, um, yeah, it, it it all boils down to, to money at the end of the day. You know, we haven't, uh, you know, especially for small ones like me, um, like their enterprise thing is sort of like 20-odd sites, which is fair enough, um, and a lot of them all sit within that kind of thing, and they all sit with sort of like between 1,500 and 2,000 keywords. Um, but so it all comes down to the price, really, because you know you might have great reports, but I might not be able to afford that extra fifty, sixty, seventy quid a month, you know, uh, just because I have great reports. Um, I could just spend that extra hour I do a month based upon that price. So it's it's all weighing it up. But I'll give them a test drive. I'm sure Dave will and um, Dave will give us some feedback and. Uh, I'll I'll uh, probably give some some feedback and yeah. I've heard that you've got money that you haven't even spent yet, Tim. Jesus Christ, Jim! I'm on the bones of my ass, mate. Clients, <laughs> please, people, pay on time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we like that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> We can't award a best answer. Um, let's move on um, to the next. Uh, this is one um, from uh, Pawan Pawa. Um, it's one that I mucked up um, late in the questions two weeks ago. Uh, um, we missed it somehow, and um, I, I promised that I would load it the following week and promptly forgot about it. Um, so it is here this week. but. Uh, Powell, it, it, it's it's um, by design because uh, this week we can announce that uh, Penguin's not far away and two weeks ago we couldn't tell you that. We can only give you bad news. Um, it, it, anyway, th th this is the, the uh, question. He says, we have a Penguin affected domain. We have tried to remove the links without much luck and our rankings are a pity. Uh, we are now thinking to develop a new, a completely new website on, on a different domain and host. Now the question is, we have active social accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus and a few others as well. Can we still use the same social accounts for the new site? Uh, as we can update our website address on all networks. Um, I just want to dis disassociate with any problem um, that might be uh, coming from uh, our old website. So please advise if we can use social accounts on the new site or should your advice be to create a new one. Uh, thank you in advance. That well, is actually. Oh, you go ahead, Dave. Well, I was just going to say, I think given that uh, Penguin is in the wings, um, we should uh, advise um, him to to wait to for that to happen and see see whether that clears up things. 
because I've seen sites sort of uh, been messed up in one particular update in the past and nothing happens until the next update. So there may be some good news lurking. Um, and I'll leave it up to you, Tim, to do the uh, nuts and bolts. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it says, so we're thinking of developing to develop a completely new website on a different domain and different host. <coughs> okay, um, Pawan, I think you're really jumping ahead of yourself here in terms of thinking about the, the social networks. However, um, because uh, you're, you're still technically thinking about doing a new website. Now, um, let, yeah, Pe Penguin should be coming out, I don't know, in theory, all the rumors are running around, let's say within the next two weeks, okay? Um, I would probably just, just have a little wait and see, okay? Um, just have a little wait and see, see if that does anything. Then the situation is this. If you still don't see any recovery after, you know, let's say the new penguin rolls out, um, the situation is this, right? So you don't want to stop. You you don't want to keep mucking about because you've already gone through the whole situation, um, and you're going to grab a new domain, new host, uh, you know, the whole thing. Uh, firstly, all your content needs to be redone. You can't now. This, this is a bit of a, a the flip side because the new penguin that's coming out now in theory is going to be a much more manageable flaming animal okay that is the theory uh, it might not be the same as the old in the old one if you took the same content and slapped that onto a new domain when you had a penalty because you just took this content but onto a new domain there were reported cases where the penalty followed them based on the content. Okay. So, if you do go down that route, all your content needs to be redone. Okay, that is the first actual thing. In terms of your social accounts, now that is very good because in theory, Facebook and Twitter are sort of not really readable. Um, but I'm assuming because you've obviously linked to internal pages within the site, uh, during the course of those social accounts that Google might or let's say yeah Google might actually then realize well hang on a second if he's using these accounts but he's on a new domain with new different content but there could this 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 potentially follow me through very good question um, I probably don't think it would however knowing and seeing reported cases where penalties followed you based on your content, seeing reported cases where Google um, actually, you know, in terms of, uh, and I know you weren't in sort of a, a in, in like a link, you know, in a link network or a private blog network, but Google actually has gone out and manually done the work and found the connections and then penalized different sites. So if you want to take it to that mass conspiracy kind of, I am so paranoid, the way, the way I would do it is, yes, I would, re I would start three new social accounts, and all you do on your Facebook, Twitter, and your G+, is um, just add a nice big image, we have moved, and with the new address in an image, not actually a link. Uh, and, th and that's in the mass... Um, paranoia kind of what I would do but um, I really don't think it's probably that necessary but then again I'm quite paranoid of Google now <laughs> so I might, I might just do it but it's a it's a very good question actually I, I've never come across in terms of shifting you know social social accounts uh, and a penguin would would that would Google find a way of following me through? I don't think he would from the Facebook. I don't think he would from the Twitter. But if he was going to follow something across and penalize based upon you've switched domains, blah, 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 and moved all content and changed content and blah, 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 if there was going to be some kind of linkage that they would potentially follow you across, 
it would be on the Google Plus page. Um, but, you know, honestly, I, I really don't think they would. But it depends on how paranoid you are. I, I see in the chat, um, Rob Mars says um, they'd follow him by address, VAT number, business name. Um, and uh, also, Cuddy Betty also in the, the Hangout chat said uh, um, he doesn't see any bad effect with social accounts if you use a new domain because Google did not punish the social site. Uh, it just affects um, your, your domain. Um, you can update your new domain with, with a social account that helps search engines to treat as new stuff, but there would be a risk of duplicate content. Um, make it fresh or let search engines know about it with 301 or uh, Canonicals. Okay. Um, and um, um, Rob Mars uh, said um, also phone number and uh, yeah. All right, um, we don't have a best answer to select um, for this one. This one aroused a bit of interest uh, in the chat. Um, had a, a, a couple of people um, coming up offering um, their services, and, and um, we, we don't have um, we don't allow um, touting for business on our SEO questions community. Um, Sure, I, I, I accept that you're an SEO, but we, we have 15,000 SEOs uh, in our community and uh, they're all capable of doing uh, um, the same as you, um, but they respect um, that we, to keep the quality up um, in, in our community, we, we don't allow touting for business. So I just thought I'd point that out. Um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Aaron... Yeah. Sorry, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I do. I do think that was like sort of a bit of an inadvertent mistake. I don't think that was an intentional um, part of touting for business. You know, um, you know, like saying, uh, you know, give me a call on Tim dot at onlineownership dot com. Um, uh, you know, we we wouldn't do that. But I think that was an inadvertent mistake. <laughs> Uh, maybe you didn't see the um, the one that I deleted. All oh, right, no, I, I I think I did see it. I think I do I I do think it might have been uh, inadvertent. I I know it looked blatant, but based on you know being a new user, blah blah blah. I'd, I don't think it was too in your face. You you reckon I'm getting too old and crotchety, mate? To, why doesn't Aaron just actually pop the question on the um, in the SEO job section? Yeah, good one. Yeah, there we go. Job done. Well, then there is that, but surely we can d discuss. Um, um, I mean, have we got the URL? have we got his URL? Um, I'll find it for you. Let me just let me yes. read the question first. Uh, Aaron asks, uh, does anyone know a freelancer or a consultant uh, who can help with my dad's dental practice with SEO and marketing strategy? Um, unfortunately, the, the budget is pretty low. It's under 500 for a once-only fee. Um, but what we're mainly looking for is what changes we can make to the website, um, assistance with keyword research, and the best way uh, to use AdWords or Yelp, etc., or if uh, that is... Uh, even um, necessary. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll go and look for um, a URL, uh, Tim. Actually, the pro problem I'll be facing is, is that uh, this is Aaron Katz, and he's um, talking about um, well. He can always just pop it on the um, on the SEO job section, and then uh, 
you know, if we find his, uh, you know, URL, we can, we can, you know, if we've got time a little later on, we can just do a little recce over it and give him some ideas on where to look and uh, what to sort of concentrate on. Okay. Um, look, I, I'm unable to. The problem I've got is that there's an Aaron Katz uh, who was a filmmaker. This might be the same Aaron Katz, but um, I'm um, possibly um, I'm not going to be able to help. Um, looking at our um, answers on the community uh, from our uh, um, uh, answers, there is any. Do any of them stand out uh, as a best answer? Okay, let's um, move on um, to the next. Aaron Katz, uh, um, Tim's advice was to, to post it uh, in our SEO uh, jobs uh, community. Um, and um, hopefully you'll get a response there. Um, here's a question from Roy ODK uh, regarding 302s from HTTP to HTTPS. He said, our server admin put a 302 um, from HTTP to HTTPS uh, on our homepage by accident. However, um, for from that moment, our organic traffic um, shoots up high. And at the same time, a paid traffic drops, possibly due to links going wrong because of the redirect. I'm particularly interested in, in why all of a sudden the organic traffic is booming. Um, your thoughts, anyone? Okay, in this case, um, I, th I think we really do have a, um, an, an easy best answer or best community answer um, that we can nominate and, and that was uh, um, given uh, by uh, Federico Sesso. Um, he said, um, that's because the redirect um, strips away the tracking tags used to identify PPC traffic. Um, in case it were, say, AdWords, it would add a GCLID parameter to the query string URL um, in case we're using the, the default auto tagging. If that's stripped out, analytics would just see its traffic coming from Google and assume it is organic traffic. I strongly suggest fixing it ASAP as this way you have no way to assess um, PPC uh, return on investment or ROI um, amongst other things. Sounds, sounds legit to me. Rob Mars agrees with me in the, in, in the uh, Hangout chat. In, any others um, on this before we move on? No, just to say that I, I actually saw something like this happen on a, a client site. Um, it wasn't to do with 302, but it was to do with uh, losing some of the tags, if I remember correctly. And this is exactly what happened. The, uh, the, the traffic was uh, reallocated, but it continued to be about the same. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, Federico has hit it on the head. Okay, um, Cardig, if I'm wrong, I apologise. Um, here, um, uh, the next question um, is um, from uh, uh, student Dania, who asks, um, uh, how, can anyone, anybody suggest what I should do to get traffic back? He says, 
Hi everyone, from the past five to six days I see a decrease in my blog traffic. I don't know what uh, the reason is, can anyone, um, anybody suggest what I should do to get the traffic black back? Um, my blog URL is studentdenier.in. Uh, um, Yep, I'll, I'll scroll, Rob. These um, um, comments are also uh, on uh, your um, panelist report too. Well, guys, if I can't get an answer from you, can you select a best community answer from uh, um, the SEA questions community responses? Just a, a quick observation. I don't know whether it's it's true for everyone looking at the site, but it was very, very painfully slow coming up here in the UK. Um, I don't don't say that that's that's all of it, but it's not. Uh, it's really very slow here. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Um. If no, no, nobody can, um, can somebody, Rob, can you, can you um, select a best answer from the community answers on Google Plus, uh, sorry, on uh, the SCA questions community on Google Plus? I have time, had time to read them all, but uh, I will we'll look into it. Uh, for me, at the moment, everything is slow, so... <laughs> Okay. Well, that will do it, won't it? If your if your site, uh, I mean, it's okay to be a little bit deviant, but um, if your site um, is uh, seriously slow, um, Googlebot um, will just run away. That's fair comment, isn't it? I'm going to record that as a yes. Um, yes, I'll say yes. I, I've got me thing on now. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I would certainly give up on trying to read the site. It's so slow. Yeah. So may, maybe I am the living embodiment of the Google bot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question nine on our run list is from Seamus uh, Jokoborskis. Um, it's regarding a multi-language site. Um, Seamus asks, uh, hi, we have an e-shop with a multi-language uh, uh, example, France, uh, in an Italian, and, and now we want to make a local e-shop in Italy. Um, is it good practice if we remove it, uh, move the IT language from the multi-language e-shop and all IT language pages um, redirect to the new local eShop. And what else can we do? You guys are going to start going on um, on strike. I'm, I'm going to have to cut your wages. Um, yes, I, I guess the uh, I can't see the beginning of this question, so I, I may be talking rubbish. Um, 
I think the question is why are they doing the, the Italian site as a standalone? Um, is it because it's not uh, it's not ranking well? Is it because they've got different products to go on there? Um, is okay. There's uh, uh, redirects good, but are you redirecting from things that are giving problems or not? Uh, not ranking. I have a feeling this is one of those um, we could do with a lot more information to be uh, give any sensible answers but uh, I'm the content man so I may well be giving uh, um, giving advice that's uh, not mine to give but certainly from my point of view I'm, I don't really have enough here to make any proper answer yep anybody else well, if, if he wants to change over his shop to the IT TLD because he thinks that's better understandable for his clients or uh, gives him more authority in Italy, uh, then uh, certainly he can do it. Uh, what he could do is start with uh, copying the site and uh, using uh, the canonical on his uh, international site, co uh, pointing at his Italian site, and uh, he could also uh, redirect it by three or once, page by page, not not all in one. I, I see Masataki Wasa in the chat here. Uh, um, said, uh, used a term I'm not familiar with, cross-site href lang. Well, I'm not so sure whether that's the official way of putting it, but um, I mean, it's in a sense, uh, sorry, um, pedal back. Um, I think there are a few ways of doing it. One is the 301 way, the redirect, um, from, let's say, example.com slash IT to example.it. Um, you could use canonical. So you have two versions, as it were. So there's the section on the eShop um, on example.com slash IT and example.com, uh, no, sorry, example.it and make the example.it canonical. Um, but uh, if you have different language versions on the same site, um, so you, if you have example.com slash fr and example.com slash en, um, it will still make sense to have hreflang between the three. So you might have uh, b between example.com slash fr, example.com slash en, and example.it. So you have hreflang between those three versions. So it doesn't matter if it's it's on a different site. I mean, the Italian version's on a different site from the English and French versions. You still probably want to have hreflang there. That was my point. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, look, uh, I've had some personal experience with this one, and I, I, would, I would have thought, and, and you guys can correct me because I'll, I'll bad always, but I, I would have thought that it, it's a no-brainer that... Um, a, a site um, um, in the Italian language, um, uh, 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 particularly uh, if it's hosted in Italy with a .it uh, um, extension, is always going to rank better than um, a site um, hosted in another country um, with um, um, that you know that, that with with that language. Um, on uh, one of its subfolders, uh, even if um, HF, hreflang is properly implemented. Um, would you guys agree with that? I can give you another example. Ranking and hreflang have nothing to do with each other. It's just uh, the, the, the way it's published. 
Well, I, 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 yes, but what I'm saying is that Italian language, Italian language pages um, mm -hmm. on a generic site um, in England, say for, a, for argument's sake, um, are not going to do as well in Italy um, for, for searches in Italian. Um, they're not going to do as well in Italy as a, a site that's hosted in Italy um, in the Italian la language. Content for content, com compared to comparing apples with apples. Would that be reasonable to say? Well, the, the Italian site on the .com could profit from the authority the .com has. And the Italian on its own wouldn't. If there weren't 301s or uh, canonicals. So it, it's not by definition. Mm -hmm. It's more likely to, to rank well because mo more logically uh, natural links will go to the IT side. Most natural links. Chamber of Commerce links and that kind of links. Fair enough. Um, guys, um, on the screen there, do you see uh, a, um, a, an answer which we can call best answer? I'll take that as a no and we'll move on um, to the next. Um, question 10 on our run list uh, is from Mohammed Kermani. Um, how can I SEO my website and build my audience? Um, I have a property website and I just uh, saved that the house information and I don't have any articles or images that uh, users um, see on my website. I just have the homes information that is duplicate for Google. Um, for example, all of the house, house, house listings have cost, area, type, address, etc. And this uh, information uh, is not valuable for Google. Um, however, my site is really well programmed and it, it's better than the other websites in the property field in the Persian language. How can I SEO my website um, and um, build an audience? Was Persian one of the languages you learned while you're in the KGB, Tim? Well, if if he programs everything, he he probably scrapes it from somewhere, and that means he doesn't have any unique, valuable information on it, even if it's programmed very well. So he should add something unique to it, something nobody else has. The other thing is, I'm looking at this in, in Chrome at the moment, and the, 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 the page content is out of the, the window on the right. So um, I'm not sure that is good programming, is it? That's um, good. Language. You the content properly. They always do that. Doesn't the, the, the language go right to left, and, and, and we read left to right? Um, well, yes, I, I was wondering about that. The, the thing is, I've, I've got like one column here. I, I've, I, I decided to change it to English to see what it was, and I can just see the area column, which is the first column on the left. Um, and that's just on the right of my, uh, my window. Um, so I don't know if I was looking at this um, with a properly set up Persian browser, maybe. Um, I just don't know, but um, maybe some of you techie people can tell me. There you are, that's my usual get out. But um, I can't even see the site properly. Okay, anybody else? SEMXE uh, gave an answer. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up um, 
on on the screen, um, or if you're following along at home, you can see uh, these um, uh, comments uh, on the SEO questions community on on Google Plus. Uh, how about it, guys? Should we we nominate um, SEMXC's answer as a best answer? I think it's close enough. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's good. That's done. Okay, um, question 11. Um, is it the blood moon or the new uh, Google update? Um, search results are, are very erratic. Uh, is it the blood moon or the new Google update? Um, um, that's from Stephen Sicantelli, a good friend from Abraxi Taxi uh, in um, Florida. Um, who's got a, um, an elevator statement for Stephen? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, I'm sorry, mate, um, but um, we're not sure if it's the blood moon or uh, um, not. Is that the best we can do? All right. Question 12. So, sorry, Stephen. Uh, question 12 on our list is from Girish Kapoor. Um, a parameter is to replace Google PageRank. Um, um, what parameters do you think will, will replace uh, Google PageRank? Um, as announced by John Mueller, um, there won't be uh, any more updates um, to Google PageRank. So uh, what parameters do you think um, can replace Google PageRank? Um, that's kind of uh, um, sort of a th he's kind of misunderstood w what it is. It's the PageRank toolbar uh, for, for pages on a site. That's not what is going to be updated, um, which was always an exceptionally simplified version, uh, just giving it a 1 to 10. Google will still be using their own uh, page rank um, uh, uh, equations. Uh, which we've never been able to see or kind of understand. Um, so that is what is going to be changing. Um, so, so in terms of anything replacing the Google PageRank toolbar, well, it was kind of simplistic in its own way um, in, in, in the first instance, so we don't need anything to replace it as such. Uh, Google will still be using their own internal page rank as a metric. Um, they'll never tell us what that is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, there's not going to be any loss or any understanding whatsoever. Okay. And um, should we nominate uh, Dave Elliott's um, community answer as uh, best um, SEA questions community answer? I'm going to record that as a yes. Um, next, um, we have a very interesting question because um, um, for, for our dumbseoquestions.com site, um, of course, um, we uh, um, currently host our uh, um, clips on, on YouTube and um, um, stream them from YouTube, embed them uh, on the dumbseoquestions.com site and uh, use um, a, a database um, of queue times to, to um, uh, open the, the clips at, at, the, um, at the right question. Anyway, Girish Kapoor asks, um, YouTube versus self-hosting for videos. Um, what are the, the SEO advantages and disadvantages of publishing videos uh, in sites like YouTube versus hosting them um, on uh, a company website.
if you take SEO as a, a, a bit broader than just Google as such, then uh, YouTube is one of the largest search engines, so you have far more chances to uh, be found. Simply said. Mm -hmm. I see you put in the chat, Rob, YouTube is the second largest search engine. Is that right? Or oh, the question mark yeah, means? Yeah. Close. Mm -hmm. It depends what you call a search engine, isn't it? It's a, it's a place where an awful lot of searches get made, but are they searches that will, that are the searches that you would do on Google? I would say there's something quite different or a bit different. So um, I think it's, yeah, it's important because there's a lot of content there and there are a lot of people looking for, for that content. Um, but it's not looking for the the content that's uh, on my blog or your blog or whatever. So, yeah. Um, and on the, on the answer to the question, um, Yes, you can put them in both, can't you? You can put them on YouTube and embed it in your company website. So, surely that's the best of both worlds. Okay, th thank you, David. Uh, um, anybody else? Okay. Um, Colin Davis um, uh, answered on, on our community. Also, uh, um, Dave Elliott disagreed with his um, last point. Um, any comments on, on, on that? Somebody want to choose a best answer? I'll record that as a no. Um, um, Gaurav uh, Gutam asks, um, what is the difference between uh, sitemap XML and XML sitemap.php? Gaurav says, hi friends, I have one question for you and I hope that I will um, get a, a correct answer uh, soon from your end. I have this website, infiniteplastics.com, um, and when I check uh, the XML sitemap, um, it's getting a res to when I check the XML sitemap getting result, um, the sitemap is missing. Um, but um, when I check XML sitemap.php, then the sitemap uh, appears. Um, so please let me know does Google consider XML sitemap.php um, a, a sitemap format? Um, and and w working properly, um, is Google getting access for all website pages via this sitemap? What is the difference between sitemap XML and XML sitemap PHP? And um, do um, both pages work the same way? Um, I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Well, I suppose Google will be looking for the sitemap XML file. Uh, I don't know what happens if it found, finds the XML sitemap.php. Probably it could read it, probably not. I don't know. Never tried. He could try it in, uh, in his webmaster tools, but as I think he tried it and he couldn't read it. As Frederico suggests, he could tell Google it has that name in his uh, robots text. Yeah. 
And if it doesn't work, it needs to rename it. it should work. Kind of. And another thing you might uh, do is um, rewrite uh, XML sitemap.php um, to sitemap.xml uh, uh, if, if uh, the PHP file is, is, is outputting the correct format. Um, rewrite it to sitemap XML uh, in, in HC access, yeah? Okay, um, can I uh, jump in and um, uh, set um, Federico Sessa's uh, um, comment on, on the SEA questions community on Google Plus um, as um, our best community answer? And um, let's move on to question 15 on our run list from Mike Cook, who was thinking about uh, setting up a new site under a dot solutions domain. Um, it, it's recently um, been, re this um, um, TLD has, has recently uh, been released. He said, I haven't seen one of these on the search engine results pages and I wondered uh, if anyone else had. Well, it's some access says uh, I don't know if they are actually released and live. A lot of them aren't. You can pre-register, but and then they will have to prove that they show up in the SERPs. Uh, and I wonder how they will treat them uh, if they will put some value to the domain like a dot shop if you have a shop and somebody's looking for a shop it will be interesting but at the moment no you don't see that <laughs> okay Well, um, um, Mike Cook, I'm, I'm sorry, um, but um, um, we don't have an answer. I, I haven't seen it, um, and um, Rob, Rob feels that it may not even be released yet. It, it certainly probably is proposed, although um, um, Rob, uh, Mike has said in his question that it has been released. I can't find a domain with dot .solutions in it. Showing up in the SERPs. Yeah. I, I see them. If with the site colon dot solutions, on stage solutions, better business solutions, mediator solutions. So they are there. They do exist. Okay. So, what what did you do um, um, for that site operator query, Rob? Did you, you did S I T E full colon, and then just type the word solutions? Is that right? Dot solutions. Site uh, site full colon dot solutions. That's amazing. I wouldn't have thought of that. I love coming That's here and you ever. something new every week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, question 16. Actually, it looks like our last question for the night. We've done it again. Um, R. Gopi Krishna asks a question. He said, the new URL is not seen in the search engine. Um, he said, um, hello friends, um, this time my doubt is uh, on page crawling um, uh, from uh, the Google search engine. Recently I added a service in my company site 
Um, CAD services. I've never seen CAD. If I'm thinking of CAD, surely it's only CAD. Um, anyway, at the first page, uh, I had the URL of www.isoltechnologies.net slash computer aided design and drafting. Oh, so it must be double D. Um, <coughs> I see these URLs uh, um, both on the screen here and also on the SEA Questions community on Google Plus. Um, but um, I go, Krishna goes on to say, uh, but due to some reason, he changed it to www.isolvetechnologies.net slash CADD hyphen services after some days. Or, or maybe he meant after some days, he still sees the old URL indexed in, in the Google search engine, um, but still the, the, the new URL. Um, is not seen uh, in, in the search engine. Uh, to confirm, he even did a site colon search, site www.isolvetechnologies.net, but I'm unable to see my new URL, but I can um, see my old URL twice. Uh, can you please uh, help me with this? Yeah, in, in his answers I see he, he didn't 301 it, or I understand he didn't 301 it because it didn't have link juice. And he should have, because now it will be just duplicated content. And for the rest, uh, fetches Google will, will start the indexing process, but it looks like it, it's already indexed. So it's indexed but not valued yet. Yep. So we should 301 it and uh, or canonical fetch it as Google submit to index and wait. Okay. Um, can I ask you guys, since it's the, the last um, question of the night, um, can we select one of these answers as, as best community answer? It's more the combination of them. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I don't know if our coding, um, this is, as, as I said, we're using this for the first time tonight. I don't know if our coding extends to having two best answers, but let me try. No, it doesn't work. Then I would select uh, Frederico Sasso's. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I tried to, to um, hook up both of Federico's. So which one is first or second? Uh, I can't see the first one. Wait a minute. Yeah, you can do the first. That's done. Okay, so we've, we've done it again, guys. Uh, we've answered all of the questions asked this week uh, on the SEO questions community uh, on Google+. Plus. Um, now we move on to our SEO news roundup. Um, we have a community on uh, Google+, Plus, which you can find by uh, searching under the Communities tab for uh, SEO news community. You'll have to add uh, um, community, otherwise you won't find it. Um, and through the week, um, uh, Edwin Yonk um, and uh, others um, add uh, items of news um, which pop up. Um, and uh, at this stage, once we've answered the questions, uh, we sit down um, and we answer them. Um, this first article um, is from um, um, Edwin um, Edwin Yonk, um, 
It was regarding a study uh, done by uh, Stone uh, Temple Consulting, um, which was um, uh, the Great Knowledge Box Showdown, uh, which was uh, Google Now um, versus Siri um, versus Cortana. And I, I thought it was a little um, biased because it, it did not um, um, use type in for Cortana, which uh, although it used type in for um, um, Google Now, um, that they used um, the, the voice search. Um, anyway, um, it, it says Google is the king of enhanced um, results. An impressive study about how many times the knowledge graph appeared and if it would answer the query. Um, this has been done by a couple of people from um, Stone Temple Consulting, Consulting, uh, also uh, Mark uh, Traphagen. Um, although, uh, according to um, the US Search um, Conference, uh, it's Mark Hap Haptragen. Who can be sure? I'd better pay Jedwin Yonk um, if we go on at this rate. We'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll be finished before he wakes up. <laughs> Yeah, well, we have any comments on um, article? All right. Um, I, I don't think somebody will use them uh, next to each other. So you choose for a button or not uh, and hope for the best. I must say that in Dutch, Google Knowledge Graph isn't that uh, terrific. I don't know how it is with other languages. but. All right, um, here's a, another one um, found by Edwin. Um, it, it was um, a, a, a share <coughs> of a post uh, made by Mari Haynes. Um, and look, I, I'll, I'll, I'll read it out. Um, and so Mari Haynes is suggesting uh, no more link removal emails. After a great summary of Penguin and manual versus algorithmic penalty, Murray Haynes sums up uh, a couple of instances where John Mueller commented um, on how Google treats the disavow file. And she's more or less telling us not to send link removal emails. I do not do an email link removal campaign for Penguin hit sites. In my opinion, the cost and time involved in these campaigns is not worth, not worth it, considering that for most sites, there is usually a poor response rate to link removal requests. Okay, um, our, um, on, on the cue prompter, our um, answers um, on, on, on the um, community um, are not included as answers. This wasn't part of the article. Um, but um, I was wondering, guys, um, if you thought that, uh, that um, these announcements from John Mueller that um, um, Google only processes the disavow list algorithmically and never looks at it for any other purpose, um, are, are all part of, of Google um, stepping back. You go ahead. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm talking as as far as I understood it, he said most likely no human being will be looking at the disavow file in general. I do think they will look at it when you have a manual penalty. They change the way how they look at the disavow file when they took away the reconsideration request when you don't have a penalty manually. So uh, things are getting a bit mixed up here, I think. If you don't have a penalty, a manual penalty, 
and you file a disval file, then nobody will look at it. If you have a manual penalty, and as part of lifting your manual your penalty, you send in a disavow file, somebody will look at it and see if you did uh, enough effort to make changes. And there's not much changed since they introduced it. Fair enough. Yeah, as always, Rob, you're the voice of reason. Um, yeah, I didn't think of that. So, uh, and, and in general, you still could send out removal requests. Uh, if you don't want your, your email or your, your link listed on the website, uh, even though it's uh, a lot of work with uh, not that much uh, success. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Well, look, there's um, one angle. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is any different or not. Um, but uh, news item number 19 um, is, well, actually, this is more, m much the same thing. Um, this um, is, uh, this one is on um, Google processes that link decibels automatically um, without human review. Um, and, and this was um, re regarding um, um, a, 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 another guy, I think it was on search engine land, wasn't it? Um, search engine watch. And um, yeah, I was hoping that Alistair Lattimore and um, um, Dan Petrovic would turn up tonight because both of those guys uh, um, spoke to Brian White uh, at SMX in Sydney um, when he let the cat out of the bag saying that the only thing that they do with it is of our file uh, um, is to look at it. Um, but of course that was back then and, and since then they've actually built a um, well, some people believe that they, they have built a, a disavow uh, tool. Some of us are not so sure. Um, okay, any, any comments, guys? All right, uh, let, let's move on uh, to the next, uh, and it was... Um, um, an article posted by Micah Fisher Kirshner. I wonder where he was tonight. Um, and the focus on user group uses um, Google algorithm to attack map pack. I have no idea what this means. Um, one of the best counterpoints I've seen for how Google doesn't provide the best result style possible for the searcher. Um, Rob Wagner said it's a very interesting video. Um, and uh, um, it's an article uh, titled um, um, Focus on User Group Uses Google, Re Google Algorithm to Attack um, Map Pack. Okay. I must say, I take, take my hat off to Barry Schwartz. Um, this new stuff is hard. Um, next is another article posted on the SEO News Community on Google Plus uh, by Edwin Yonk. Um, Google Business Reviews, um, a, a bug in the Knowledge Info Panel. I think um, Tim Kappa. Um, and did answer, um, oh, actually, it's a post um, by Tim Kappa, I should say. Um, 
and said, Tim, let me let me claim you and ask you to speak on this. Yeah, what's actually happening there is <coughs> um, in the Knowledge Info Panel, it's showing seemingly three separate um, three separate bad reviews. However, when you go into all the reviews to find these three separate reviews, there are actually only one review which are being split up in the Knowledge Info Panel to look like three bad reviews. Now, one reporting them has not had any reaction and it's probably been uh, four weeks now. And since then, someone else has posted a good review and that hasn't changed anything. So it seems almost as if this is just stuck on splitting up one bad review into three and nothing seems to want to change it. So it's certainly a bug. Um, but as to how to get it rectified, God only knows. I see. Um, I think that's the post um, that, no, maybe it isn't. Um, um, but um, anyway, look, re referring back to uh, last Friday night in the green room after uh, Social Media Fridays, um, our hangout at that time, um, when we had a look at um, that site um, that we couldn't move the pin on, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I just had a look at it this morning. I, I, I'm just trying to bring it up now, but um, I, I had a look at it this morning. It still hasn't moved. I don't know what we have to do to budge this. Um, the issue is that um, the business uh, had been um, 19 odd years in, in the same location, but uh, three months ago, <coughs> but we cannot force um, Google MapMaker to change the pin. In the meantime, customers are going to the wrong place. Well, hang on a minute. Well, there you go. It's fixed, Tim. <laughs> I reckon. I reckon uh, Google what did that deliberately to make a fool of me. <laughs> well, I'm so pleased um, that that's fixed. Okay. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Linesman. Thank you, Ball Boys. Well, um, it remains the fact that those those. Map maker guys are, are sometimes complete idiots. So. Yeah, well, uh, at least that's one um, fairy tale in. All right, um, moving on happily to news item number 22. Um, here's something that's interesting uh, a call for an SEO code of ethics. Um, so, what is ethical? Um, standards before ethics. Uh, what about principles? Uh, many SEOs discuss the principle of being an ethical SEO and what it means. It is somewhat of a chicken versus egg story, namely, namely uh, Michael Martinez argues, and, and he does, and so often, um, how does one behave ethically in an industry without standards? This is correct, but I think Michael made a thought mistake throughout the article. Namely, the code of ethics are the principles and standards uh, together. The principles uh, define what should happen and the standards define how it should be solved. Although I do not, I do not believe industry-wide standards um, that can be set by ISO will be uh, beneficial, it is an interesting article. It's so deep that Edwin Young. Oh, there he is. Hi, Derek. Uh, how you going, buddy? 
Um, yeah, if, if, if you read the article, it's, it's quite confusing because he... Um, he mixes up uh, a couple of things, so... Um, but it is an interesting read. Uh, does anybody else think we need standards for SEO? What happened? What happened there? <laughs> Still my alarm. Someone tried to steal my chair. <laughs> um, well, I, I think um, the, the, I don't. I can't see. I mean, if just just assume that, that, that this were possible, and, and there, there was a, a published set of standards, a published set of methods, um, a published set of practices that an SEO. Um, did and uh, if you weren't um, following that pro forma, you couldn't be an SEO. Um, really, um, how easy would it be for um, a Googlebot to shoot you down if everybody was doing the same thing? If everyone was adhering to the same standards and the same set of practices, um, everybody would be sitting ducks. And additionally, we already have uh, standards uh, within uh, the normal law. So why do we need extra uh, standards, extra rules for something that most countries uh, um, have laws for? It? So I don't, I don't see, I don't think it is beneficial. I think it's more uh, if if they do it, it's more or less. Uh, an extra tax on your SEO services. Yeah. So we can't get you to pay an extra hundred quid a month, uh, Tim. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, look, um, guys, we, we've done it again. That that's the end of um, our um, uh, SEO uh, news. Uh, Roundup, and uh, so uh, that's it um, for another week. Um, for the, th those of you still watching, we, ha we have a link uh, in the SEO questions uh, community on Google Plus. It's the top uh, article uh, in the community, and the first comment uh, on that article, uh, um, you can join us. Um, we're going to go to green room now, and. Um, but you are more than welcome uh, um, to come along and join us. We'd really like uh, to have a chat. Um, thank you very much for your participation this week. Um, it's your interest that makes um, what we do worthwhile. Um, thank you most sincerely. And